Good morning, everyone. How y'all doing? After that introduction, let me really be me. How y'all doing? So, my name's Ramondo Nash, and I get the pleasure of serving as the Associate Vice President for Student Services at San Jose State University. Shout out to my peeps. I'm gonna talk to you all today a little bit about this notion of being an outsider in an insider profession. Some of you, I know what you're thinking. How is he an outsider? He's an AVP. He's an associate vice president. In theory, I have a spot at the table. When you think about insiders, you think that they have a spot at the table. You think that they're getting the information that they need to get. Not always necessarily true, but that's what you think. When you think about outsiders, you think about people who feel like they don't belong. Some of you in this room probably feel like an outsider. And so what I want to do today is to share my story with you about how I got here and how I hope to go towards the future. And so I start with this when I begin to speak about myself. What screws us up most in life is the picture in our head of how it is supposed to be. We come into situations, we come into scenarios, and we automatically think it's supposed to be this way. Well, let me show you how pathways can take. For myself, I was born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes, people are born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada. Word up. My parents got divorced when I was three. My mom raised my brother, my sister, and myself, and I'm the youngest by herself. I knew from an early age that I was going to go to college. It was going to happen. More importantly, I got to watch my siblings go through some of their mistakes. I love them immensely. They taught me a lot about what not to do. They also taught me a lot about what to do. The reality is, is I was just smart enough to not make their mistakes, or at least not get caught making their mistakes. My mom, as I said, raised us by herself. To this day, let me send a shout out to her. To this day, I think she walks on water. She deserves that. But at the end of the day, when you see me, and from Alva's introduction, please understand that I love classic hip hop and R&B. 80s and 90s in particular. Matter of fact, I like to remind people that I only walk like this because I have to. On the weekends, I walk like this. <laughs> I was also what they call a scholar athlete growing up. And growing up in Vegas, in the time I did, it was cool to be an athlete. And make no mistake, I was a baller. It wasn't cool to be a scholar. Being a scholar wasn't what I was supposed to do. Alvin shared with you a little bit that I'm also a geek. I love Star Wars. Matter of fact, one of my nicknames is Rhoda. I won't go into why that is, but it is a nickname. I do have a lot of comic books, been collecting since I was three. I have a storage room for my comic books. I put an image up here of a Pop-Tart. Let me share a quick story with you. So I get to college. I'm there, I'm walking into the dining hall. It's one of my first days on campus. And I notice a guy putting a Pop-Tart in a toaster. And I look at him, and he looks at me, and I look at him, and he looks at me, and I look at him, and he looks at me. And finally, I can't take it anymore. And I ask him, and I say, hey, what you doing? 
But the reality of the situation was we didn't own a toaster when I was growing up. And so when I noticed that he was doing something to a tasty treat that I hold in high regard, <laughs> I just didn't understand that. I was a first generation college student. Matter of fact, I'll say this. I'm a first generation higher education professional. Because just now I, just because now I so-called have education, that doesn't mean that I'm not bringing my first generation notions and sensibilities when I step to or sit at any sort of table that I'm at. I also have this law degree, as you guys heard earlier. And I was going to be an attorney. I was going to be a civil rights attorney. I said that from the age of three. However, life happens. My senior year of college, I had a daughter. Love her to death. She drives me crazy. I love her to death. I didn't want to go across country to the institution that I was going to go to to do civil rights law. I wanted to be close to her. So that meant I ended up going to a university, Santa Clara University in the Bay Area. The Bay Area is not the bastion of places for civil rights law. And so I had to figure out what was I going to do next. So I decided that I would emphasize in juvenile delinquency law. I figured most of my friends were juvenile delinquents, why not? <laughs> then I made the choice to not practice. I'm still explaining that to my mother regularly. <laughs> but I made that choice. But I had to figure out what was I going to do. And so I ended up becoming a graduate hall director, and then they took a chance on me and I became a hall director. I figured out I was missing something, i.e., I figured out the hustle and that I could get a free master's in counseling while I was doing what I was doing. And I went back and got that. But remember, I'm supposed to educate. And so how I choose to approach things is from a law school perspective. And what that means is, I'm supposed to challenge you. How that may come across sometimes, though, is I'm uncaring, I'm not nice, I'm mean, I'm sarcastic. And the reality is, I'm none of those things. Well, I am sarcastic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to educate you. I'm going to get you prepared to do whatever it is that you want to do. But I also deal with this on a regular basis, this notion of imposter syndrome. Because when I come to NASPA, I'm not seeing any of my law school classmates. When I come to NASPA, Everyone knows everyone. I've now been around long enough that I know people too. But my first NASPA, if I wasn't an introvert, I would not have felt like I belonged. My first NASPA was what told me that I was an outsider. This notion that I don't have a higher education degree tells me I'm an outsider. But you know what the joke is? I still have taught higher education classes. Ha! <laughs> what I really have to educate folks on, though, is my introversion. Because you all see this. I can make you laugh. I can make you smile. I definitely can make folks cry. But I'm an introvert, all day, every day. I'm always that fish that's trying to jump out of the boat. So those of you that thought that that fish that jumped out the bowl was trying not to do well for themselves, the reality was is they just didn't want to be with those other fish. <laughs> but it's funny being an introvert, because there's nothing more truer than this statement. Once an introvert decides that they're going to let you in, and I won't blanket this for all of them, but at least for me, once I decide to let you in, 
you will never have a dull moment, ever. But I also want to make sure that you understand this. Don't underestimate me because I'm quiet. I know more than I say. I listen more than I speak. And I observe more than you know. So this notion of this outsider piece, one of the things that I hope to encourage you all to do is to begin to embrace outsiders and begin to embrace our introverts. Because at the end of the day, it's us as higher education professionals who are going to let folks know and let folks understand that they belong. At the end of the day, it's us who will make our institutions, ourselves, better for allowing people to be who they are. And at the end of the day, I want you to remember this. As leaders, we need to acknowledge and embrace not just the introverts, but also the outsiders that are amongst us. Because if we don't, we're losing out on talent. If we don't, we are not going to move our profession forward. If we don't, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to sit up here today and make y'all laugh. So I thank you for giving me this opportunity. And I thank you for listening to me. And the introverts that are in the room, find me. You have a friend. Thank you very much. Yeah.